it's something we can control in a world where there's not a lot that we can. We can control what we notice and what we remember and who we help. So my name's Olivia Mosca and I have been working at the Wordsworth Trust over the summer. I'm an intern from Brigham Young University. Back home what I study is vulnerability mostly, and I use literature and philosophy to kind of help me explore vulnerability. The reason I do that is I'm hoping that learning about vulnerability will, will help me understand how to better care for people. I just think that right now, more than anything, we need to be concentrated on how to care for the earth, how to care for each other, and how to care for ourselves. And I think the first place that we need to stop and look at that is through vulnerability. So coming to the Wordsworth Trust, I've always loved romantic literature, but um, I haven't actually used romantic literature specifically to study vulnerability, and I certainly haven't used the Wordsworths to do that. But when I got here, it became really clear that, that my priorities um, and what I want to do lined up with um, the Wordsworth Trust's priorities as well. They're doing something called Reimagining Wordsworth right now. It's an exciting project because what it does is it um, it tries to say how how can we look at Wordsworth in, in new ways. So I started reading um, Wordsworth through that lens when I got here. It was just the first thing I did. Um, the thing that got me interested in studying this in the first place is I have personally had to face a lot of my own vulnerabilities and not necessarily voluntarily. A lot of people get to choose whether they're going to be vulnerable with somebody, if they're going to tell them private information, if they're going to you know, ask somebody out on a date or if they're gonna, they, a lot of us choose when we open up, but um, I, I have a disability that made me kind of face it really early on um, where I couldn't run like the other kids or walk like the other kids. Um, and so be, because of that, I've, I've been facing my own vulnerabilities and be, have become quite comfortable with them over time. And I just, I saw how that actually gave me um, a power or a strength in a way. And and I realized that vulnerability is, is dangerous when it's mismanaged, but it's actually very powerful when it's understood. And so I, I really, I really had a passion for vulnerability and I didn't know it, but Wordsworth did too. Both of the Wordsworths did. Um, William and Dorothy um, may not have used the same words that I'm using right now to, to talk about what they were doing, but they were very observant, not just of the nature around them, which is what they're famous for, but they're very observant um, about the people around them, about the stories that are around them, about the injustices that are around them, about the realities that they faced with disabilities. But there's just so much um, that, that can help us understand. So part of my work at the Wordsworth Trust was devising a workshop where we just sat down and we talked about it. The workshop was based on vulnerability and privilege because that was uh, an aspect I hadn't really looked at before was privilege mixed in with that vulnerability. Um, and the Wordsworth's literature really helped us navigate through it. Um, there were so many poems in the lyrical ballads where just vulnerability is everywhere but it's it's treated with dignity and respect and, and it, it poses a lot of questions. The workshop that I ran wasn't really about getting to answers necessarily, but really about getting us comfortable asking the questions that we have and getting us comfortable helping each other and serving each other and noticing each other and what our needs are. So the trust is really devoted to perpetuating one of William Wordsworth's greatest wishes for his poetry, which was to console the afflicted, to add sunshine to daylight by making the happy happier, and to teach the young and gracious of every age to see, to think, and to feel. He's really telling us that we need to, to observe in order to feel something, and I think that that's something that we don't always think to do, but I think it's something we can practice doing. And, and that's, that's my hope as um, I'm, I'm an aspiring academic, but I'm, I'm hoping what I can do is, is teach people to use their observations, just like Wordsworth did, to, to get people to feel something. And I hope that those feelings inspire actions that, that make the world into a better place. And that's really what he wanted to do with his poetry. There's a quote that I really love from William Wordsworth. There are a couple. <laughs> but um, one of my favorite quotes is when he says that the best portion of a good man's life is his little, nameless, unremembered acts of kindness and love. And that's something that I've experienced, even just having a disability where it's, it's a little more difficult to walk, it's a little bit more 
it's, it's a little difficult to navigate things physically. When people notice that I'm having a hard time, they see that and then they feel something and they slow down. And it's so simple. It's, it's something that they would never remember, but I, I remember. And that's enough for that moment. Is, is that something good has happened where I feel belonging and I feel connected. And I'm really hoping that that's what people learn when they, when they approach William Wordsworth's literature from this different angle maybe than they, than they have before. I hope that they not only notice nature, but they learn from it in the way that he wants them to learn from it. They learn to connect with nature, whether that be caring for the environment or caring for animals or caring for people or caring for yourself. Whatever that is, I hope that um, people can learn from both William and Dorothy Wordsworth as her journal is just absolutely littered with noticing, noticing the vulnerabilities around her. And she's constantly struggling with, with how to balance that, that that struggle's okay. Um, I hope people know that that struggle's okay and that they just feel like it's a struggle worth having and that these conversations are worth having and that reading and noticing and looking for vulnerability is worth doing um, because it's something we can control in a world where there's not a lot that we can. We can control what we notice and what we remember and who we help. Which brings me to one of, again, my, my favorite lessons that I've learned from William Wordsworth. Um, he says that there is a comfort in the strength of love that will make a thing endurable, which else would overset the brain or break the heart. And I think that's just absolutely the case. I think it's absolutely the case that community and care and listening to one another and making the effort, even if it goes unremembered, making that effort um, will absolutely help in ways that nothing else can console or help. It's only that noticing and acting and loving and caring and being there. So I hope, I hope that my workshop got people thinking at least about it. Again, I don't have answers to the world's greatest ethical problems yet. <laughs> um, but I do know where the questions start and I hope that we can all start feeling comfortable talking about the things that, that make others uncomfortable and make us uncomfortable but are worth talking about.